Laurie, thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, changed times and we're having to do this over the internet as opposed to face to face. But you've been in the club around about a year now, um, quietly in the background, I suppose. So can you tell us a wee bit about your role at, at Queen's Park? Well, thanks for having me, Sean. It's uh, good to speak to you. Yeah, my role at the club, it's, well, you say quietly in the background, it's been non stop for 12 months. Uh, there's been so much kind of transition and, um, you know, it's a, it's a new chapter in the club's history and it's, uh, it's a privilege to be a part of it. My, you know, my, my main role is obviously assistant head coach, um, you know, in a, a supporting role to the gaffer in any way that he needs. Um, you know, on the pitch duties revolve around training and, and match preparation and, and the practicalities surrounding that and, uh, you know, off pitch duties, Obviously, as I mentioned, I've been involved in a transition, um, you know, from part-time to full-time. Mm -hmm. I had just turned professional when I arrived uh, January last year. And um, so, you know, I've, I've had the, you know, the, the great experience of being part of the transition from, from part-time professional up to full-time professional. And, you know, we're, we're, we're proud to say we've got a, a full-time training squad at the moment. Um, <clears throat> and I've also, behind the scenes, been involved in the very early department uh, development of, of kind of, new departments um, within the club that will that'll be key to the, the progression of the club as we go along. And before joining the club, you had a, a very successful career as a player spanning nearly 20 years. Can you talk us through where you played your football? <laughs> well, I'd, I mean, my main uh, spells in my career were at um, Wraith Rovers and St Mirren. Um, I had a one year also at Cowden Beath, working under Mixie Patalainen, who I played with at St Mirren. Um, he took me to Cowden for a year, and I also had a, a year playing part-time with uh, Stirling when they were in the Championship. But the, the main bulk of my playing days were at, at Wraith Rovers and, and St Mirren. Um, I had three different spells at Wraith Rovers, uh, from when I was an apprentice right through to the, the end of my playing career. I um, was fortunate enough to win uh, the two league titles, taking us up to the championship twice, um, promotion with Wraith Rovers. Um, and on the basis of the, the three spells put together, um, I was really honoured to be awarded a, a testimonial at the club as well. Um, ironically, one of my biggest games with the club was at, was at, was at Hamden. I was fortunate enough to score the uh, the winner in the quarter final of the Scottish Cup against Dundee. And uh, so then had the privilege of walking out with the team in the semi-final at Hamden against Dundee United. Um, brilliant memory. And after your playing career, you went on a number of coaching jobs before you came to Queen's Park. Where else have you been in the country? Yeah, well, <clears throat> as I say, I finished my, my playing days at Wraith Rovers and I had the transition um, from player to first team coach. Um, so I was, I was still playing and operating as a first team coach when Grant Murray was manager and Paul Smith was assistant. Um, and it uh, seems like many, many moons ago, but you know that that was a really difficult challenge. It was exciting, and it was it, it was one that I, that I lapped up. But the transition from player to coach is a is a difficult transition. And uh, while you're still playing every week, uh, as well as coaching, it, it was made all the more difficult. You know, I, I uh, the, the, when you try, when you move from being a player to a coach, your workload just kind of quadruples. You know. Uh, not just at the club, but your mind on the game and on training and on, on preparation. You're, you're constantly on it, so it's a, it's a shock to the system. And I remember some some Friday nights sitting down, you know, finally sitting down at half nine at night, thinking, "Jings, I've got a game to play tomorrow." You know, so that, that was uh, that that was tough, but a, a brilliant kind of taste and taste and, and education towards uh, the coaching that I had ahead of me. Um, I, as part of that that coaching team, I was I was fortunate to to be part of the Ramsons Cup win against Rangers at Easter Road, which was a great a great day for, for Wraith Rovers. Um, and then the year the year after that, at the end of the following season, uh, Ray was appointed at Wraith. And uh, so I was delighted to be included in his staff. Um, we, we had a Premiership playoff uh, against Hibs. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't successful against Hibs, but right, right on the back of that, Ray moved to Dundee United um, and he asked me to be his assistant up at, up at Tannadice. So it was really hard to leave Ray Throwers after the, so many years there, but um, it was a great opportunity to, to be part of a big operation. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a privilege to, to have been part of a, a coaching staff and to have worked at Dundee United, you know, such good people and, and great history at the club. Um, 
we were, <coughs> at United we had some success as well. We won the we won the Ramsons Cup uh, against St Mirren at Fir Park. Uh, we also had the cruel experience of narrow defeat in the the Premiership playoff against Hamilton. So that that was uh, that was a really difficult day. Um, you know, really cruel experience that was. Um, and also, you know, in the unfortunate circumstance in between managers at, at, at Dundee United, I was, um, you know, I had the, the chance to be caretaker manager twice, and that was an experience that was difficult, but I threw myself into uh, on both occasions. Um, and then just before coming to Queen's Park, I had a six-month period with uh, working with Gary Naismith at, at, at Queen of the South. Um, new challenges, new experiences. I hadn't worked with Gary before, and they uh, enjoyed it and, and built a good friendship with him. And that 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 was that's leading up to my job at Queen's Park. Excellent. And then, and I suppose focusing on your job at Queen's Park, what does that a normal day entail in normal circumstances? What would a normal day look like for you? Um, <clears throat> well, normal normal circumstances. <laughs> Uh, probably arrive at the club eight o'clock, back of eight. Um, get, you know, get set for the day. Uh, think about plans for training. Think about any kind of alterations from you know. We'd obviously discuss training the day before and, and what we'd hope to do. But sometimes, you know, full time football can can throw a little uh, curveball at you. Some you know, a player wakes up ill, or there's an, a, a, maybe a fresh injury concern in the morning, and your your kind of training might have to adapt because of that. Or it may just be may be based on the on the wellness. Uh, so the players fill in a wellness form every morning, and we may get a couple of a couple of warning signs from that 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 me may want to adjust training and and um, and maybe tweak things for that for that day ahead. So the gaffer will discuss any any kind of player or training issues with the staff um, around that time, and uh, you know, and then we, we go out and prepare the training pitch based on the session that, that we've we've got in mind. Um, and where possible, you know, it's I like to to try to get a minute or two with the players as they prepare for training. You know, it might just be individually, or it might be you know, we might get we catch up with a couple of them in, in twos or threes, but try to, to try to greet them all, um, you know, before training begins. It's uh, it might just be one or two of the last the last players that you do that with might just be on the training pitch before training, but try to try to greet them personally. And I, I find that that's an important thing for me to start the day properly. Um, and then, you know, once training's finished, afternoons, there may be an afternoon training session on specific days during the week. So uh, afternoons can be, we can be training, we can be analysing our own games, we could be looking at the opposition that we're coming up against uh, next weekend, um, or it could be just, you know, next day preparation for the for the session ahead and the, and the fine details towards that. Um, and obviously, as match day approaches, we're, we're looking at the, the organisation arrangements for the game and the, the match prep and making sure everything's smooth on a Saturday. And in current circumstances, how much has that daily routine changed? Obviously, you're doing everything from home just now. How, how difficult does that make things? Yeah, it's been challenging. You know, it's it's uh, it's been difficult, and the you know the season's been kind of obviously stop start. Um, with you know as soon as the as soon as the current measures were, were introduced, you know we were really keen to to keep the same weekly routine, same working mm -hmm. routine uh, for the players. It, it, you know, it's obviously not going to be. The same, you know, you've not got the same intensity. You've not got the, you, you know, you're not beside the players. You can't, you don't get the same feel for everything that they're going through on a daily basis. But we wanted to try and replicate as many things as we had control of. Um, so you know, same structure. So we, we we train with the boys on the on the same training days. So Monday, Tuesday, we we'll give them a rest day. On the Wednesday, we train. Thursday, Friday, and we also do a training session to 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 try and make sure we're working Saturdays as well. Um, <clears throat> the different days have got different uh, types of sessions. So if we were, you know, particularly during the week, if there was a specific specific day, like a Tuesday, where there's an increased training load, we would we, we try to, to replicate that in the training that we provide the boys with uh, on those days during the week. Um, and you know, obviously, the initial part of that is we meet the players um, via Zoom, um, and they've also then got their own their own sessions to to go and complete on their own, or you know. Um, in their own kind of environments close to home but um, so we you know the staff meet at quarter past nine in the morning we'll have a zoom zoom call together we all have a blether about the day ahead and maybe some issues from previously previous day or overnight issues that have cropped up so the physio will inform us on anything to do with the wellness testing and and, and that kind of thing we'll discuss the session and whether we want to tweak any of, of that day's session uh, any any other information that we feel we've got to provide the players with um, and then we, we meet the players at 10 o'clock so uh, they, they come on, we, we have a, a large Zoom. It can be kind of 
30 people sometimes on, on, on Zoom and, uh, you know, making sure that we, we, we meet and greet them. It's quite difficult to have, obviously, individual chats. We can we can pull them aside at different times to have a blether, but um, it's really just a communal thing, getting on, having a smile. And, uh, and then Gordon McFarlane, who's helping us with sports science, he, he, he'll he take a, a kind of uh, indoor session. Could be, you know, 45 minutes of varying things like it could be, um, you know, it could be foam rolling, it could be some mobility work, some stretching work. Um, some injury prevention exercises, a little bit of upper body strength work, a little bit of leg strength work, bearing in mind that, you know, we've not ac got access to, to gym equipment um, or, you know, gym surroundings. Um, so it's, it's, it's been difficult. The, the boys quite quickly early on, uh, right at the start of these recent uh, measures, we made sure that any equipment that we did have that was portable, uh, we could move out to different uh, guys that, that, that could use it specifically with their training or, or rehab or strengthening work. So there are kind of kettlebells and dumbbells at different houses and uh, we've got spin bikes at different houses and um, lots of mobility bands, elastic bands and things floating around and uh, the players have all ordered individual ones where we needed to. So we've, we've done well in that sense. Um, so once and once the indoor Zoom sessions finished, the boys every day the boys are sent a you know a comprehensive um, conditioning session that they need to complete, and it's based around what we feel we need to get into their legs for that specific day. Um, as I said before, it's never going to be the same as being right next to them on the training pitch, um, and we don't have access to our usual um, GPS stats. You know we we can't use that at the moment, so we've we've done what we can to record some training data uh, via Strava. So they all report their, their sessions um, by one o'clock on Strava. And we can we can then have a look at that and see see kind of what distances they've covered and and uh, duration and things and and you know look at it as detailed as we can. Um, but I must say that the, the players, you know, these are difficult times and the players have embraced the kind of challenge of working around um, these obstacles and, and they've adapted and the effort that I've put in and the, and the, the application and the, the commitment to just doing the best that we can in the moment to try and hit the ground running when, when we get that opportunity. They've, they've been fantastic, Sean. And you touched on it briefly earlier, analysis. How big a part does that play in today's game? I know through Fraser on a match day, what's expected of him? For you and the rest of the coaching team, how, how important is that? Well, <clears throat> analysis is, you know, it's now an integral part of um, of modern football. It's, you know, we use analysis as coaching staff in a, in a performance, um, you know, scenario, but analysis is used in, in recruitment and, and different departments throughout. So, you know, and specifically video analysis is, uh, you know, it's, an, it's a massive, it's an integral part of the modern game. And the, the tools um, that allow you to analyse uh, games, whether it be video or whether it be you know data analysis, you know they just jump ahead every season, and it's sometimes hard to keep up. <laughs> and you know, but with that in mind, you know you, you can you've got to have a, a setup that's relative to your your staffing and and what you can actually manage on a daily basis. You can have all the data and all the all the stats, but you've got to process it well and you've got to get a benefit from that. Um, and that's you know that's the tricky part. But we're we're in the early stages of of implementing a, a cloud based uh, platform at Queens Park. So <clears throat> you know it's hopefully through time it'll, it'll become a specialised department. Um, mm. Video analysis has been really restricted by COVID. We can't have the players in one meeting area together to watch scenarios. So we've got to kind of uh, put out little clips here or there, or have small groups where we can we can analyse um, videos. And of course. You know, now that we're now that we're remote working from home, that's made even more difficult. So we've had to kind of adapt on our feet, and um, we're in the very early stages of implementing that, that kind of department. But that's that is something that's that's going to be a department that will grow with the club and and definitely benefit the club year on year. And I know you touched on having worked with Ray previously at Wraith Rovers and then Dundee United. The fact that he's brought you into Queen's Park, there's clearly a good relationship there. Is there an element of a good cop, bad cop with you guys and the, the players? How how does that work? Uh, well, I, I mean, I don't consider, you know, a specific, having a specific role in that sense. Um, you know, I, I've developed good, I feel like I've developed good personal relationships with, you know, every individual mm. uh, in the squad. And, you know, I feel that I could, I feel that they could be comfortable and confident coming and speak to me about anything, you know, football or not. And, and that's, that's really important to me. So that's, I suppose that's the, 
the compassionate side, but you know, the flip side is I can get ratty when standards slip and, and if I'm not happy about something, you know, I can bark a little bit. So, um, but I'm always trying to be honest and I'll always try and explain my thoughts um, and, and give them, you know, football perspective. And focused on the football, we're obviously in, in the middle of a break. Hopefully that won't last too much longer. How do you feel the, the season's went so far? We're obviously sitting top of the league, five points clear. Pleased with that? The season's gone fine so far. Yeah, we're top of the league. Um, you know, we've got a big challenge to keep, you know, keep driving and, and improving and moving forward. Um, you know, we're happy with the position. There's there's so much more to come and develop, um, and so much more to improve in so many areas. So, and we're you know we're fully committed to doing that. Um, so, you know, the, the big challenge is to keep things going. We're happy with the position at the moment, but there's 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 you know so many things that we want to drive on. Is there a challenge there in terms of managing expectation within the squad, or is it just a case of taking a game at a time? I know looking in for the outside, there's a lot of chat that we should be running away with the league, which is quite clearly not it's easier said than done. How how is that managed in terms of because the players obviously see social media? I, I mean, how how's that managed? I suppose. Well, you know, I think with all the sort of publicity surrounding Queen's Park and the progression of the club and, the, and you know, the, the ambition of the club, that, that puts a big target on our backs, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, we walk out at Hamden every week and I think, you know, everyone that, that watches Queen's Park would, would appreciate that, that, that our opposition are turning up at Hamden with a, a different outlook on the game and a different approach to every game. And, uh, you know, we don't get anyone on an off day. And we've had that, you know, I've experienced that before when, you know, at Dundee United, when we were in the Championship, you know, at the time Hibs were in the league and you're never going to get Hibs on an off day. They were, they were real crunch games between United and Hibs and every other team in the league was, was you know, playing out their skin to beat us. So you, you never, ever get a week where you're getting a team on an off day. Um, so that then has to drive our standards up and we've got to make sure that that, that, that we're on it every week. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's difficult, but that's that's a challenge and it's, it should be something that we're proud of. You know, we've the club have created that with the ambition that we're showing and the squad that we've put together. And uh, so we've got, to, we've got to embrace that challenge and, and, and meet it head on. Thank you very much, Corey. That's excellent.